Hey guys, so last time we saw how to use a z-table with just one uh, z-score. So let's go ahead and move on to talking about two z-scores. So, three types of situations are going to happen when you're working with an interval between two z's. So, we either have on the same side on the right. So what do we do with that situation? So, they're both on the same side on the right. They're both going to be positive z-scores, right? But what we do is, we're going to have the probability from 0 to z2, the bigger one, right? And then we're going to have this little smaller chunk, 0 to z1. So what we end up doing to get the chunk in between, right, and so I'm talking about the green part right in the middle. What we do for that part is that we end up getting the larger probability and subtract the smaller one so that we're left with just whatever's left over. Does that make sense? And so again, we've seen these concepts, we've applied this before, um, and it's just kind of bringing it back now to using the z-table. So what we do is then the probability from 0 to z1, or basically the smaller one, I'm sorry, 0 to z2, the bigger one, minus the probability from 0 to z1, the smaller one, right? So we're left over with that little chunk. And so all you do is subtract the two probabilities. Now what about the probability if they're on opposite sides, right? So z1's on the left, z2's on the right. So what we do for that one is actually not a difference at all, because we're not trying to find a chunk that's in between both, right? We're trying to find an area that's in between both, but they're in opposite sides. So what we do then, since our table provides us 0 to z2, and then it also can give us 0 to z1, right? And it's always from 0 to any z-score. What we do then is just add them together. So the probability from 0 to z1 plus the probability from 0 to z2 gives us our answer. So all you do is add the probabilities. And then the same side on the left. So it may seem a little crazy, you know, I don't know, maybe we did it on the right, the left's going to be any different. It's actually the exact same situation as on the right side, if they're both on the right. Because what we have now, instead of Z2 being the bigger one, Z1's the bigger one now, right? So 0 to Z1 is a big chunk. You see that? So let me actually scroll up a little bit. So we have 0 to Z1, and then 0 to Z2. So what do we do? We get the bigger one, and subtract the smaller one to get this little leftover area right here. Does that make sense? So 0 to z1 minus 0 to z2, so we end up subtracting as well. So whenever they're on the same side, you subtract. Whenever they're on opposite sides, you just add them up together. And what I mean by them, I mean you look it up in the z table, find the probability, and then you do add addition or subtraction. So once the pro two probabilities are looked up in the table, it's simply a matter of plus or minus, right? What do you do with both of them? And again, even if you do the subtraction wrong, so let's say you subtract the smaller one minus the bigger one. You should never end up with a negative probability. Why? Because even though you subtracted it the wrong way, probabilities by nature are never going to be negative. Remember, they're always between 0 and 1. Because there's never a negative probability and there's never a probability greater than 1. Does that make sense? So. Even if you messed up, it's okay. You'll get a negative, you'll be like, oh, I messed up, let me switch them. And that's about it. So what's the probability of finding a z-score between negative 2.58 and negative 1.65? So let's start off by drawing our midpoint. And I always do the midpoint just so I know that that's like my reference point, that's the middle. It's just a force of habit. Um, and it's actually really good when you move on to further problems because it always kind of sets that midpoint um, from the beginning. Then we have negative 2.58. We also have negative 1.65. I'm moving it down just because I don't have that much space right there. Actually, what we're going to do is move the 0 over. So we have negative 1.65, and then our 0 is right there. So what are we looking for? Let's go ahead and shade that area always. Let's always do that as our first step. Right? So we're looking from negative 1.65 to negative 2.58. So let's go ahead and look up both of those probabilities. So negative 2.6, and then we go across to 5. So 2.6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to end up with this number here. And let me just make sure that we're in the right column. Exactly. So this is the 0.5 column. So 2.65 is 4960. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that one. 4960. And then our second one, our second Z that we're looking up, Sorry, it's 2.58 and 1.65. 2.58. So 2.58 and 1.65. So 1.6, 0, 1, 2, 
Good. So you get 49.51 and 45.05. 49.51 and 45.05. So let's go ahead and write that in. So this is 4.505 and then 49.51. Does that make sense? So 49.51 is from 0 to negative 2.58, and then 45.05 is from 0 to negative 1.65. So now, what do we do from here? If they're on the same side, whether they're both on the left or both on the right, what do we do with those probabilities? We subtract them, good. Because we have the bigger one, 49.51, we have the smaller little chunk in there is 45.05, therefore the remainder, whatever's left over, is the probability from that negative 1.65, to negative 2.58. So the probability that negative 2.58 and z is in between that is going to be 0.4951 minus 0.4505. Cool. So once we get those probabilities, we end up getting 0.04046. So there's about a 4.46% 4 chance that we end up getting a z-score between negative 1.65 and negative 2.58. So now let's move on to our next one. So probability of finding a z-score between 1.96 and 2.33. Again, let's set up our little zero midpoint. We have 1.96 and 2.33. Let's go ahead and highlight what we're looking for. We're looking for the area in between those two, right? And now let's look them up on the table. So once we look them up on the table, 1.96 and 2.33. So go down to 1.9, and then go across to 0.6. So 1.9, this is the 0.6 column. So here we are, 47.50. 1.96 and then 2.33. So we go to down to 2.3, and then we get 2.30, 2.31. 2.32 and 2.33. So 47.50. Let's actually do these in different colors. 47.50 and 49.01. Cool. So let's move on. 47.50 and 49.01. Now 49.01. is right here and then 4750 is from 0 to the 1.96 right so very similar situations very similar to what we did on uh, example 1 just flipped on the other side right so what do we do with those probabilities how do I get the probability that Z is between 1.96 and 2.33 we subtract those probabilities again so 4901, because we have the bigger one is 4901. We have this little smaller chunk in between there. So to get the leftover, all we do is subtract the two probabilities. So 4901 minus 4750. And once we do that math, we end up getting 0 0.0151. Let's do two more examples, and then we'll move on to practice for both 1z and also 2z's. So find the probability that z is in between negative 2.33, so here's our zero point, here's negative 2.33, and positive 2.17. Right, so now we have one on the left, one on the right. So what do we do from here? Let's go ahead and highlight what we're looking for. Right. And now let's look up 2.33 and 2.17. So 2.33 and 2.17. So let's start off with 2.17. So 2.1, right? So we got 2.1 right there. And then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 48.50 is our number. And then 2.17 2.17 and 2.33, I believe. Let's see. Yeah. So we're looking up negative 2.33, but what do we know about our z-table? Our z-table, even though it only gives us positive numbers, positive z-scores, right? 
Whether we look up the negative one, it's just going to be the flip side. Because again, with symmetry, the probabilities in this table are going to be the same for positive or negative. Does that make sense? So 2.33. So we're back at 49.01. So 48.50 and 49.01. So, 4850 and 4901. Cool, so what do we do with those probabilities now that we have both of them? How do we get the probability that Z is between negative 2.33 and 2.17? We just add them. So 4901 plus 4850. So when we add those, we end up getting 97.51. Cool? All right, so let's keep moving on. Example four. So find the probability that z is between negative 3.65 and negative 4. So here's 0. And negative 3.65 and 4.0. Negative 4.0. So we're looking for this little area here, right? And so let's go look at little bit our table, 3.65 and 4.0. Oh no, 3.65 isn't there, what do we do? Again, I have my warning sign. As you're going down, you realize that anything past here, just assume that it's 0.5, right? So let's go back up. So that means negative 3.65, gets 0.5. What about 4? Four? 4 is going to get exactly the same thing because it's even further, right? So 0.5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, boom. So the probability of the bigger chunk is 0.5. The probability of the smaller chunk is 0.5. How much is left over? Where we do that is subtract the two probabilities, right? The probability that z is between negative 4.0 and negative 3.65 is 0.5 minus 0.5. So what are we left with? Zero, basically. Crazy concept, right? But essentially, the reason for that is because since negative 3.65 is so extreme, the probability of us finding anything greater than that is so small, it's basically zero. It's so insignificant. So from 3.65 to 4, it's, there's, no, there's no difference in between those two because those two values are so extreme that the probabilities associated with both of them are close enough that there is no difference, really, because they're both essentially zero. right? The probability of us finding 3.65 or higher is like a 0% chance because it's so extreme. The chance of us finding four or higher is also basically zero. So the probability in between those two is still just zero. There's almost like no area under the curve in that section. So again, even though these drawings, the, the ones that I do are very skewed, right? So 3.65 wouldn't be right here. It would actually be like super all the way over here, right? And this is assuming that the distribution is continuous. And it just goes on forever and ever and ever. But see, see their areas? This, were, this is where negative 3.65 would technically kind of look like. And then here's 4.0. What's the area between those two? It's basically zero. Cool. So that's about it for our concepts, how to use the Z table. Now let's go ahead and apply these to a bunch of practice problems. So it's going to be fun.